Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Nick Anna's Photography YouTube channel. It's a new venture for me. It's something that I've been passionate about doing for a long time and I just haven't really done anything about it. Uh, I was inspired because I was away at a convention a couple of weeks ago. It was a non-photography convention. I was actually working there, I was shooting video. And during that time, it was only a two day convention with a small amount of people, probably only 50 people. I got approached no less than four times by different people asking where they could get tips from to take their photography to the next level. And I had a couple of suggestions, there's some great YouTubers out there, but I thought there must still be a need for this because people are still asking. So I figured I'd give it a go myself and see if I could impart some of the knowledge that I've gained over the last 20 plus years and share it with you guys and then hopefully make your endeavor into photography and filmmaking a much more enjoyable one and get you out to step out of your box and move off of that pesky uh, P mode or any of the automated modes that you're using all the time, which you probably are using all the time. If you're somebody who's stepped up from a cell phone or a, a smartphone and they've gone up to a camera like one of these, one of these uh, entry level DSLRs or even a great DSLR, it doesn't matter, but you're stuck in that program mode, this is meant for you. And I'm gonna break this down into four different episodes. And the reason I'm breaking it down into four different episodes is so that you can get used to each concept and actually try it for yourself. So the first one we're gonna start with is shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically, like I said, the speed that the camera opens and closes its shutter. It's referred to in, in seconds or 60th of a second in fractions of a second. It can be long as, as long as, um, indefinite opening which is called bulb and it can be a shorter duration as eight thousandth of a second it can even be higher than that in some super high-end cameras there's four basic ways that you can change your picture with the settings on your camera firstly you've got the shutter speed which is what we're going to be talking about today and that's basically just the time that the shutter opens and closes to let a certain amount of light into the sensor you've then got the aperture the aperture very basically it's just how big of a hole is in the lens and lets how much light in whether it's a lot of light or a small amount of light you've got the sensitivity of the sensor itself that will directly affect the type of pictures that you can take and then you've also got the lens that you choose the lens of choice that's also going to affect the type of picture that you can take so what we're going to do in this episode we're going to take one of those elements we're going to take shutter speed and we're going to see how that affects your pictures and what we can do to change the shutter speed and what effect that has when you do change the shutter speed so let's break it down what exactly is shutter speed shutter speed is just basically how quick the shutter opens and closes and how much light it lets in okay that's the technical bit but what does it actually do well it's the difference between freezing your frame if you've got really fast moving action or if you're taking sports pictures you want it to be tack sharp and then you would use a really high shutter speed like a thousandth of a second or four thousandth of a second if you want to freeze walking for example it might be two fiftieth of a second and if you just need to take a sitting portrait of somebody sitting still then it might be as low as a sixtieth of a second even a thirtieth even a fifteenth so it just depends on the subject that you're taking. You can also use a slow shutter speed for effect, just as you can a high shutter speed. Now, if I was sitting here waving to you and I wanted to make my hand absolutely dead still and you're taking a, a still image of me from there, then I'd have to pick a shutter speed somewhere north of 250th of a second to freeze my hand and make it look like a stationary subject. Maybe you as a storyteller want to show some mo movement in there so you want to see some blurriness so that you can tell that it's moving. In that case you might go for something as low as a fifteenth of a second. So you can see how picking a high shutter speed or a low shutter speed can really help your photography. It also helps when you've run out of other options to get more light into the camera. You can put it on a tripod. Just like astrophotography, for example, you can actually leave the shutter open indefinitely. You can just press the bulb button, B for bulb, and it will stay open until you tell it to shut. And that's how you get those sweeping arcs of stars moving through across the sky. It's by using the bulb exposure, basically just holding the shutter wide open. 
So now we've established that, how does the camera do it? Well, you can see there's a couple of different ways. The uh, traditional cameras are called the um, you know, DSLR, single lens reflex. So basically this camera here has a mirror inside of it. And when you look through here and you come out here, you basically just see in prisms, it's like a, a periscope, if you were. You look through, it diverts the image down and then periscopes it through the, through the camera. If I leave this lens off, you can see the mirror inside there. Do you see it? You can see how that is, you see when I depress the shutter, the mirror actually flips up and down. Uh, and then behind that, the shutter's actually going up, opening and closing too. But the mirror's going up and down so that if, you, if the mirror was up, you wouldn't be able to see through this camera because it's basically an optical image. So you look through the viewfinder and you're just looking through exactly what's through the lens. So the more modern cameras, for example, the uh, mirrorless cameras, see how much thinner that is compared to the, uh, the DSLR? And that's because it doesn't have that same mirror system. There's no, there's no mirror system in this prism. It's just an electronic image is all that you're seeing. It's an electronic image, not an optical image. So it gets rid of all this prism. Slightly different, if I take the back off, now you look in there, you can see the sensor, see the sensor? And then if I take a picture, you can see the shutter speed. See how that closes? Now that you're looking at the sensor there, I don't want you to confuse it. It's the shutter that's, the sensor is actually off now, but when the shutter goes across it, it turns on and off. Um, but the shutter is actually what's letting the light in. The way I learned to understand the shutter speed is basically breaking it down into its rawest element. What I'd suggest you do is take your camera and set it on an auto ISO, okay? So we're gonna, Stand in a, in a room where there's a window light behind you and have somebody stand just in front of you. Put your camera to auto ISO. Most cameras have auto ISO now. Um, if, if yours doesn't, then pick uh, an ISO like 800. Um, you're gonna pick the shutter priority button. On Sony, it's S, or not button, it's a mode, uh, the S mode. And on Canons, it's... Uh, a T, it's called TV for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but you can see the TV mode there. That's the same thing, it's shutter priority. Not sure what Nikon is, um, but basically you're gonna set it to the shutter priority mode. You're gonna have the window light behind you. You're gonna have your subject standing in front of you. I want you to start at a, uh, say like a 200, you're gonna use your jog wheel to change to a 250th of a second. And then you're just gonna try and brace yourself and sit comfortably, take a picture, then go down a couple of increments, go down to 1 25th of a second, take a picture, check that it's still sharp, go down to 60th, take a picture, make sure it's still sharp, go down to 25th. And I want you to keep going down and down and down, analyze each picture and see if it's still sharp or not. It's really important you understand how slow of a shutter speed you can hand hold and still get a sharp picture. If you, you're gonna to get to a point where it's gonna be blurry, something in the picture, you just can't hold it still enough. And that point is different from you, it's different for me. Uh, it depend, this camera has an absolutely unbelievable image uh, stabilization system in it. So, whereas I could normally, with this camera, I could shoot at a 60th of a second with a 24 or 70 lens. This one, I could probably shoot at a 15th and get great results. So. It depends on your lens, your camera, and how steady you can hold a camera. What your numbers will be will be different to mine. But go through the experiment, see how slow a shutter speed you can actually hold it to, and it's a good number to know. The other thing you wanna look at is the highest shutter speed that your camera can physically go to. With these higher end cameras, it's 8,000th of a second. Um, yours might be different, it might be 4,000th of a second, it might be less than that. But check out that number two, because that's your upper end. You wanna know your, your lower end is probably gonna be bulb, which is wide open all the time. And then the other thing that you also wanna check is just your flash sync speed. And without getting into too much technical detail, it's basically the highest shutter speed that you can put on your camera before you start getting black lines through the, the sensor. Um, uh, this camera here is a 200th of a second, the Canon 5D3 is two, two, 200th as well. I've had them where they're as high as 250th of a second, and I've had a camera that was as low as a 30th, although that's unusual. 
But um, so that's a limiting factor when you're using flash. Uh, you want to find out that what that highest number is and don't exceed it for sure. Um, unless now there is a technology that is called high speed sync, which um, I'm not going to go into right now, but we will cover it later on down the road. But for, for a moment, I want you to find out your maximum sync shutter speed. If you go over this speed, basically what happens is the camera can only have the shutter fully open up to a certain point. After that, the shutter opens and the trailing edge of the shutter is already closing. It's like a blind system. It comes across, the bottom opens, the top closes, bottom opens, top closes. Well, what happens is once it gets to a certain point, the bottom's, already, the bottom's not fully open and the top's already starting to close. And it's basically letting a strip of light come across the sensor. And when that happens, you're going to get black lines where your flash is. Um, so if you go over to it, over your flash sync speed, you're going to notice funky black lines on there. So it's important to know. Do this exercise for me. Find out your slowest shutter speed that you can handheld is. And then in the next episode, we're going to tackle aperture. And I think once you get all these components together and try and actually do something with them, it's going to make it so much easier to understand the concept of photography and how much more creative ability you're going to have over your content once you grasp these four principles. So with that, uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know. Put it in the comments below. Please subscribe and then click the little bell there and it will, it'll notify you every time we have another episode. Uh, next, like I said, next episode is going to be on Aperture. Um, maybe we can go along. I'm going to show some, some of the local area here in, in Fort Myers where I live and, and Sanibel Island where my business is. And I want to bring in an element of some fun stuff too. I do some paramotoring and uh, hopefully we can do some camera stuff on the, on the paramotors and, and uh, different areas like that. So hopefully it'll be a fun ride. For now, guys, that's all I've got. Look forward to the next episode and uh, see you then.